Welcome to Everything Co-op, bringing you information on how cooperatives can help improve your quality of life. This show is being sponsored by the National Co-op Bank, NCB. The NCB is dedicated to strengthening communities nationwide for the delivery of banking and financial services for the nation's cooperatives, their members, and other socially responsible organizations. For more information on the power of community ownership, visit ncb.coop. That's ncb.coop. Now stay tuned for your host, Vernon Oaks. Good morning. This is Vernon Oaks uh, on Everything Co-op. How are you doing this morning? This is a great Thursday morning to be on the air. The sun is up. But, you know, there is just a lot of construction out there this morning. A lot of traffic, a lot of construction. And we have Miss Nikki. How are you doing this morning? I am doing very brisk. Well, I am doing great. Well, it's good to be with you this morning. Glad I'm glad you were able to get here and get here okay. I got into a traffic jam. They were doing construction on the road. Oh, Tacoma Park is very busy. Yes. To say the least. Okay, so we're going to talk about food co-ops this morning. All right. Um, I had an ex- an extraordinary time shopping last night. In yeah, Black. you came by the store, I was told. Yes. And I'm surprised, though. I, I, I don't see glut anywhere. I don't. I've, I've been doing the show now for three years, and I know about the Greenbelt uh, Food Co-op, the Silver Springs Food Co-op. Well, and you guys have been around for how long? Almost 50 years. 50 years. Yeah, we started in 69. So we're coming up on our 50th anniversary. Well, congratulations. Well, we hope to make it to 50. <laughs> Why don't I know about you guys? Oh, well, it's not that we keep a low profile, but advertising is expensive. We have a very loyal customer base from all over the area, uh, people outside of the area. Um, we were begun as sort of a f- food desert operation, although I don't know that that term was used so much at that time. But the young man uh, who was one of the original founders was very aware of... Um, that sort of an environment, particularly in cities, where uh, your conventional grocery stores had uh, kind of abandoned neighborhoods and they were just left with corner markets. And so uh, when the project began, he and various friends, it wasn't initially a co-op as such. It was more of a, of a buying club situation. And then it evolved into what it is today, a worker yeah. A worker-managed business. Worker-managed and owned? Well, we don't really think of ourselves as owners. You know, we're uh, a trust. I think that's what it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you when you come, you work. You, you don't get a salary. We're paid hourly. Everyone has responsibilities either on the shift or as a, a worker there at the store. And when you leave, you leave. <laughs> you know, when you quit... You're gone, and you don't take a piece of the store with you, as if you were an owner buying out a part of your part of the business or something. You know. How many uh, worker owners are there? How many? <laughs> How many of us are there? Yes. Uh, there's 12 of us now, and um, we also have uh, a system of barter workers. I don't know. I think. I think business has a number of names for them, if and when, uh, short-term contract, you know. Mm -hmm. But people from the community come, and they, as you would say, volunteer, and we compensate them with credit, the equivalent of minimum wage and store credit. And uh, that's always been a big piece of our work. You could say it's a big piece of our work because it's about community involvement, but it helps us to get certain sort of the work there at the store done. A lot of the bagging for the nuts mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. seeds and dry fruits, things like that. Volunteers do that. They repackage uh, our bread delivery every morning. They help us with a variety of things and then cleaning up at the end of the day. And uh, it's it's great because it gives 
another source of income to community people, and it gives them an experience in how the business works. And I think a lot of the volunteers that come really feel an engagement with us. Well, let's start off by what's the name of the cooperative? It's Glut Food Co-op. G-L-U-T, Food Food Co-op. Co-op. Address? 4005 34th Street in Mount Rainier, Maryland. 4005 34th Street. 34th Street. In Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier, Maryland. Uh It's right off of Rhode Island Avenue, at least Route 1, going out. Yes. And if anybody knows where the circle is, that's when you get the circle. the bus turnaround, yeah. That's right. It's a block away from that circle. Uphill. Okay. So it's an awesome find for me. I mean. Thank you. I I shop at Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, and um, Greenbelt Food Mm Co-op. And what I found so interesting there is the variety of things that you have in the store. And your price was... 20% 20% lower than Whole Foods on the things that I buy? Mm-hmm. Well, it's uh, we're a vegetarian business. There are some minor things that, you know, like the gelatin capsules that we have for some of our uh, supplements, that sort of thing. But uh, as a vegetarian store, there are people who aren't going to be able to satisfy their entire shopping experience there. Okay. So for that reason, they may go some other place. But also because of our focus on being that, being vegetarian, uh, the concept of food for people, not for profit, which was a big holder over from the 70s, you know, something for people, right. not necessarily for profit. And uh, that trying to keep our prices down that way. And then uh, an exploration of organic and natural, which we've always... Uh, for many, many years at least, tried to do. And um, not everything in the store is organic, but the idea is that we want to provide good quality food for people at reasonable prices. You know, we did bulk before bulk was chic, you know. Mm-hmm. Just lots lots of things, lots of things like that. I'm glad you found a lot of variety there. We try. It's kind of packed in. It is packed. It Can is you imagine local. what it was like before we went over into that extension? We were just... Originally, that storefront, and it was a grocery store many years ago, many, many years ago. So a food desert, this will go back to that term uh-huh. you use now, is food desert is where you cannot get fresh fruits and vegetables. And so By in the 60, 1969-ish, mm-hmm. that's when I was graduating from college. That's when you got started. And 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay, that's awesome. That's really great. Now, how are we yeah. going to get let, let people know about you guys? Uh, by word of mouth and just by being in the community. Some of our oldest shoppers know about other businesses like Stone Soup from many, many years ago. And there was a, a market, more like a wholesale market on Florida Avenue. You know, all these places have faded away. A beautiful day trading mm-hmm. company in College Park is gone. Uh, we're just a holdover from that period. But... We're seeing a lot of difficulty these days because there is more shopping in the area. We're going to come back to that more difficulty. Why don't you know about us? I think it's generally our lack of advertising. Advertising is very expensive. We're going to see what we can help you with that. Yeah, that would be nice. This place is nice. Listen, we're going to take our first break. This is Everything Co-op. If you have any questions of Nikki, you can call us in at 1-800-450-7876. Information is power. This is why the National Cooperative Bank is sponsoring this program and why WOL is such a great, great partner. We're trying to give you the information about cooperatives, and this morning we're talking about Glut Food Cooperative in Mount Rainier, Maryland. You know, the, the information that we're giving you is to, to help you to understand what a cooperative is, that maybe you might go start one on your own or you look for co-ops. The great find that... Uh, we have just found out with Glut Food Co-op is they have excellent, excellent variety of foods. And I've just found out it's vegetarian foods, but at a lower price. And that always catches me. And by the way, I live at East Capitol and Benning Road, which is... Right there. Uh, you know, right 
in D.C., and I've got to drive, like I said, to Whole Foods or Greenbelt, and I kind of think you are closer to me than those other places I go. Oh, definitely Greenbelt, yeah. Yeah. So you're going to be seeing me in the store. I don't know if I'll volunteer or not. No. (laughs) You're a busy guy. (laughs) Um, Do you go by the cooperative principles, the values and principles, values of honesty and openness and... And we try. Social responsibility. <laughs> we try. Yes, uh, we try. Caring we do. for others. Yes. I uh, usually, when we have donations, they're local. You know, the local schools, Joe's Movement Emporium, that sort of thing. Uh, honesty. We try to be as honest as we can with our customers. It's sometimes it's a little difficult because people don't understand these days how the marketplace works. They think they do, but they don't. And. Um, you know, I, I try hard not to, to feel anxious when somebody's at the register explaining to me how, well, I got this at this store and that at that store. And, you know, because they're just talking, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we uh, we try to do the best we can. We try to stay responsive to our consumers needs. You know, uh, Judy has just joined us on the line. We've got All Nikki right. Thompson in the hey, studio. Judy. Good morning, Judy. Good morning. How are you this morning? Can you hear me? Yes, very clearly. Good. Oh, okay, cool. Good morning. I, as I said, I was in the store last night. I met Kim uh, and uh, maybe three Zaya. or four people in there. Zaya should have been there. Zaya. And uh, somebody was on a cash register. That like, was Zaya. That was Zaya. Uh, Rasta Farron looking man. And y'all were playing Rasta music, so I was dancing while I was shopping. Yeah, he has a band. <laughs> Many of us have have other work that we also do. You know, our salary isn't the greatest there, and, and so a lot of people have to have additional additional work that they do. But um, there, there are about half. Judy, don't you think like half of us have been there for a number of years now, quite, quite a while? Judy and I have been um, there for 20 years. How long have you been there, Judy? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, my oldest son is 35, so... Uh, no, he's thirty. Yeah, he's thirty-five. <laughs> so it's been thirty-five plus years. Wow. Yeah. Nikki, how long have you been? Oh, like I'll see. I came in like uh, eighty-six or eighty-seven. So it's been a while. Forty years. No, not forty. But for it's not as long as Judy, but it's been a while. Judy was Judy. You were expecting a baby when I came. That was one of the reasons I got hired. So <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm a second child. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right, you are a cooperative. You've got about 12 people that work there, uh, gut food co-op. Prices uh, that my quick shopping last night was about 20% lower than what I normally pay for food stock. The food was excellent in quality. I ate my dinner from there last night. So. Great. <laughs> well, you asked if we followed the co-op principles, but I think one of the biggest points that I would like to make is that we use consensus decision-making. And um, we have business meetings every other week. And when we have issues that need to be resolved, they're brought up at the meeting. Um, If we were to ever ever give ourselves a raise, that would be something that we would have to discuss. Um, Store hours, um, customer behavior, volunteer behavior, you know, all all those things are discussed at meetings. So I got the first principle is volunteer and open membership, and the second one is democratic member control, and you're talking about, and then the fourth one is autonomy and independence. So when you say consensus making, that's... Consensus decision making. Consensus decision making. Okay, Mm -hmm. so that means that you have to have a vote and... You have to come to an agreement. Is that 100% of the people? Majority. A majority, yeah, not always 100%. We have ways to deal with that because sometimes we can't quite come to 100% of the vote. But don't you agree, Judy? That's right, <laughs> right. So how do you, how but do you, it works out somehow. It, it generally works out. We, we figure things out and it, you know, it's a go along, keep on getting up. <laughs> can you give me an example of maybe the latest decision that you had where you could not come up with 100%? Hmm. Yeah, what do you think we could talk about on the radio, Judy? Um, 
What I'm trying to get to is where we how, did how, not. Where you did not. And how about how where you, we did? We just brought in a new product line. We brought in uh, Hex Ferments from Baltimore. Their kombucha and sauerkraut and kimchi. It was, oh, it was excellent, excellent stuff. And so we had samples at the meeting, and we all smacked our lips over it and did a tasting, and we all firmly agreed that product was coming into the store. We did agree. <laughs> hiring, hiring is very, very difficult. Right. Yeah. Hiring yeah. is always a really difficult. Yeah. There was a, a case where as um, there was a worker that wanted to be hired, but um, well, it didn't. Uh, everybody did not come to a consensus on it. Uh, but um, okay, so did that got over with? Uh huh. Did, it, did you end up hiring a person or not without the consensus? Uh, we did not <laughs> because okay. everybody could not come to a consensus, and uh, uh, although the person was hired later on, years later on. So. Okay. So things work out somehow. <laughs> so, so okay, you're in the room with 12 people, or maybe you have 10 of them there or whatever, some number of people, and this person comes up, let's say it's John Doe says, I've been working here in voluntary, and I would like to work here full-time or 30 hours a week or something. And then you all decide, and Judy, you're for the person, and Nikki, you're against the person for whatever reason. So you all sit there and talk about it? Oh, definitely. You, do you do you holler at each other, scream at each other? Or? Well, I, we try not to scream, but there's some raised voices <laughs> quite, quite often. Well, there's some raised, so therefore, yeah, you know, you know, but never to the point where it came came to blows. No, we've had people actually walk out occasionally, you know, but uh, yeah, yeah. but we try yeah. not to do that. We try to be civil yeah. adults and and come right. and come to consensus because that's how we have a workplace that that can function. How can you work with people that you that you can't get along with? You you know you got to be able to work that out. But I, I tell you, I think this is one of the fundamental, and this is the really the first time in the three years I've had people to talk about this particular part of cooperation. Is how do you solve? Well, let me tell you what I've come up with. In the Bible, it says where two or more are gathered in His name, God is there also. Okay, and I've come to the conclusion that when you have two or more people together, you're going to have disagreement, and you need God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. So, no, definitely. So if you got 10 or 12 people in a room, you're definitely going to have differences of opinion. Mm-hmm. And so how do you resolve that? And listening to each other seems to be one way of, right. of at least getting to right. a possible consensus. Right. Well, well, one of my coworkers says I pick my battles. So they may be more easygoing about how the decisions are made and they may feel that if the majority is moving in a certain direction they'll work with it they'll just work with it Mm -hmm. and other people are are extremely adamant it's it's you know it's my way or the highway um but we just we talk and talk and you know you try to persuade people sometimes we come up with um temporary solutions occasionally we have to table business okay uh, give ourselves time to think about it yeah and i'm I'm still thinking specifically over the last few years (laughs) Yeah. You know. Yes, we have. Although we have maintained and we've been able to, uh, you know, get through it without anybody coming back hating us. <laughs> coming back okay. Something crazy. So, yeah, we're all right. You know, mm-hmm. we'll work it out. <laughs> but how you said you meet every other week, a mm-hmm. business meeting every mm-hmm. other week? Yeah, because we pay ourselves <laughs> a, a nominal amount of time to be there. And so uh, it just became too expensive to do it every week. Yeah, it was every week. Um yeah. Up until when things change with the economy and such, we had to uh, change. <laughs> come back, come back a little bit. But we have an awareness board and we have an agenda board, and um, they they tend to get smushed together. But because the awareness is just be aware, and we don't always read those things. It's if you have notes to leave each other or things that you think would be topical for discussion. But the agenda is um, it's more topics that we have to discuss and we may have to have a vote on. We have bylaws. We have rules. Okay. I I like this a lot. I like co-ops a lot. So now let's go to member economic participation. We want to talk that's the third principle. I want to talk about that in education training and information after we get our second break here. I can't believe I'm just excited about your company. Well, you know, we don't have member member financial participation because 
we're open to the general public. So well, I think you do. Do you think we do? Think Ooh, do. well, all right. I I'd be good do. to hear you say that. <laughs> I think you do. All right. We're going to take our second break here. So please don't touch the dial. We'll be right back after we get the traffic, the weather, and the news. Welcome back, everybody. This is Vernon Oaks on Everything Cooperative. We're talking about Glut Food Cooperative this morning. We have Nikki in the studio and Judy on the line with us today. They have been working 35 years at Glut, and uh, you really need to go by the store. You, it's, it's phenomenal, all of the food stock that they have there for the prices. Um, I said we were going to talk about member economic participation, and that's the third principle. And normally there's a fee to pay to get into a cooperative, at least I live in a housing cooperative and there's a fee to get in. And then if there's profit, then the members decide how that profit will be divided up but between the members or you mentioned already donating money to the community or what do you do with the monies that are surplus over and above. And the one that I like best is education, training, and information. And over the break, Nick and I was talking about how you train people about the financials, this, this economic participation. So I, I got from you, Nikki, that there is no money to pay in, the 12 people that work there, worker We're a owner. worker co-op, yeah, not right. a consumer co-op. I understand. And so that's that big difference. I think some of our workers feel that a pound of flesh is being taken from them every time they come in because our, our salary is not that great. But you don't see people leaving easily. Once you start being your own manager, managing your time, being, you know, being able to order and present products to the consumers, there's there's a certain joy to that. It's, I mean, for me, Judy, I think you feel the same way. You have it, some, it is, it you is. Have, you know, no, it's not yeah. it's not a lot of pay. You know, we don't get paid nothing, but it's more of a more of a dedication, and um, you know, you just want to um, give people folks a product products that, you know, it's not over costly, you know, and, you know, we take a we take a loss because, like I said, we're not getting paid a whole lot of money. I mean, I know I'd get paid more money if I wouldn't work for Whole Foods, but but, you know, um, it's just nice being there, you know, it's a nice community store, you know, it's just, you know, I don't know, that's why I've been there so long, being my own boss, work when I want to, and just helping folks, that's, that's what I like, that's my passion, so I'll be in there. So what I, what yeah. I get for compensation is more than money, and what you're talking about are the other the intangible intangibles that people. Well, let's, let me say it this way: Do you like what you're doing? Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. I do. Yes, Wait. I love what I'm, I'm doing. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love what I'm doing. Yes. <laughs> so that that is the main intangible about working in co-ops, and I want to go back to what Nikki said. Uh, of, you got a worker cooperative and a consumer cooperative are main two groups, and it depends on who owns and controls the business. In this case, the workers own and control the business. Some food co-ops are consumer-owned and controlled. That's the people that uses or buys the products, like a housing co-op that I belong to that I live in. The people that live in it, that uses the product, the housing, we own and control it. And there's a great joy in having some say about what you do during the day, and then helping people. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Definitely so. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That, that sums it up. <laughs> That's why I, I said I wanted to talk about this member economic participation because it, it's more than money. Uh, you get yeah. joy in life, and when you wake up in the morning and say, well, do you have trouble getting out of the bed and go to work? Do you have trouble? Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> well, we yeah. have a we have a um, as a as workers we have a, a certain schedule that we have to work not not hours of the day but you have a certain number of shifts to work per week. We have a weekend work commitment, okay. which can be a little painful. You know, you you're working every weekend, you're working some time every weekend, and then around that you have to figure out when to get in there and stock your section 
order your yeah. section. Yeah, it's there's well, well, trouble. I, I, I myself personally, I don't. As I said, I, I like coming in and doing things, and um, the only trouble I'm having is with my back, yeah, <laughs> my, yeah, my injured yeah. back. You know, uh, and this is due to an accident about a year ago, and uh, I'm dealing with that. But other than that, I enjoy coming in there and doing, you know, doing what I have to do. Doing what needs to be done. You know, it's, and it's a challenge. You know, with all the things I have to do, I have a lot of things I have to order, but um, I uh, I like making people happy, getting in the things they need. So yeah. Well, we have a lot of liberty, too. For instance, I research a lot of new products. I do a lot of uh, what you call Mm -hmm. dry goods grocery. And Judy, because she's not able to stand at the store as much as she was before, she's taken on some additional responsibility. She took a food safety class, and she now makes things to sell at the store. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and so, you know, in in a conventional business, to be able to have the freedom to do something like that, you'd probably have to push all sorts of levers and pull all sorts of chains to get the management to let you do it. Right. But you are the management. We are the management. Right. And Judy decided this That's was right. something that she wanted to do, and uh, yeah. we didn't really talk about it at meetings. I don't think we did, Judy, but but everybody agreed okay, that it was working out. If, if, it, if things hadn't been yeah. selling, we would have talked about it for sure. But, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. I just need to get more productive with it. But, yeah. It really would. So this education training in number five, uh, Judy went out and took a training class to figure out food safety so she could do additional things. Mm-hmm. What uh, We were talking during the break about financial training, that, mm-hmm. uh, how often you meet every other week, how often you go over to finances to see how well you're doing. Um, my, my day job is I manage apartment buildings and co-ops right. and condos. Right. So... I produce financials for each property each month, mm-hmm. and we try to have it out by the tenth of a month so we can go over it with the board so they can see the decisions they made last month, how well they did or didn't do, and then what decisions they've got to make in the future, right. uh, whether that's new roofs or cleaning or whatever it might be. So how well do how often do you all do your financial statements, your financials with your 12? Well, it's brought owners. to the meeting. Chris brings it to the meeting. He has a financial statement from the accountant. Um, Every three months? Yeah. And um, we don't really talk about it as well as we should. We usually use our we bank don't. account. We usually use our checking account as our gauge um, because we're solvent. We're able to write checks to pay for product as it comes in. It's not as if we have to lean on that 30-day net thing. But over the last number of years, you know, since, the, since before the 08, financial problems, we were seeing a lot of change in the marketplace. I always have used the uh, idea that we're on the front of the roller coaster. And if the economy is going up or if the economy is going down, we're the first to see it. it. We really feel it. And I don't know if that's because of our small size. Um, I'm just not. It could have a lot to do with, you know, a lot of other stores opening up, such as Whole Foods. Very close by. Yeah, yeah. There's a mile, Miles, a mile away. A yes. Whole Foods yeah. is coming about a mile and a half away. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes isn't yeah. too far away. Um, yeah. There's a brand new 24-hour day Safeway a mile away. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting because that Safeway moved from closer to me in my neighborhood, and, and I only live a mile from the store. It moved from like about a quarter of a mile from me over a little bit more to a bigger, glitzier store with more parking, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the, these big businesses do what they do, and they do what they do to make money specifically. And we're not – we want to make money, but we're not there to make money. That's not our goal. That's not goal. Mission. Yeah, that's not our mission statement. Our mission statement is good food for people at a reasonable price. Right. And we, we want to make some money because we got to pay ourselves and p- put the lights on and buy refrigeration equipment. But, mm-hmm. you know, I, that doesn't mean we act like fools. We have responsibility to ourselves and to each other. You know, try to keep losses to a minimum, if nothing else, because that's food waste. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, we we do talk about finances a lot, more mm-hmm. in a general sense, not – Specific. Uh, not specifically, you've got to bring that down by X amount of money. Uh, we haven't 
prices, when I listen to them talk on programs now about, well, and we, we're anticipating inflation. We want inflation. And I keep thinking, oh, my God, because customers come in and they say, well, your price went up on that. And I said, well, we haven't changed our markup in years. Prices right. have just gone up. And so consumers, you know, they know that. They understand that. But they tell us. Do they do that at Safeway? Do they say to the cashiers, well, the price went up on this. Do they go into Whole Foods and say, oh, yeah, the price went up on that? I doubt it. But they tell us. They tell us all the time. The price went up. Well, we're not making any more money than we did, but the price of goods has gone up. Yeah, that is a huge one. That that is a huge one. Uh, Then cooperation among cooperatives. Do you... Do you do any cooper- uh, cooperation among with the housing co-ops in the area, or no, not really. Credit unions, um, or n- no, not really. Um, and I think it's because of our distinct standing as a worker business rather than a board-driven business. There used to be an entity called the Mid Atlantic Co-op Alliance, and um, all the co-ops would uh, get together at a monthly meeting and interact with our largest grocery supplier uh, to come up with uh, a sales flyer. And uh, some of the other co-ops went their own way. You know, they found distributors that that they preferred to deal with in that, in that manner and not to be too technical. And so that union dissolved. But that's been a few years now. That's been maybe eight or nine years at least. But um, I think the co-ops used to interact a little bit more. You know, there's the... Um, Bethesda Co-op. We never hear anybody talk about Bethesda Co-op anymore, do you, Judy? Never hear of it. No, no, no. They're, they're still there. I guess they are. Um, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, we have no problem referring people to another store if they've got something that we don't. We're always sending people to Smile Herb Shop or Blue Nile Herb Shop, but uh, TPSS and and CNTPSS, they kind of their board had them split into two entities at one point. What are those initials? Uh, Tacoma Park Silver Spring Co-op. Co-op. So they have the Tacoma Park Co-op and the Silver Spring Co-op now, but they're all board driven. They're they're different. They're a different animal than we are. You know, quite quite the different story. And we do all of our training in house, and we train our volunteers and. Uh, <laughs> We could be better about training, don't you think, Judy? I mean, I think maybe. Always, <laughs> always, always can improve the training, yes. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So mm-hmm. this, the last, the seventh principle is concern for community, and it seems like you are community-driven in your mission, excellent food at the lowest possible price. We try. Right. We try. Yeah. We try. I'm always looking for new things. And Judy has some products in her section that aren't carried at other stores. One of the uh, items that I've got, it's a kind of a cracker, and the lady said, you're the only place on the East Coast that I have my product. Do you know anybody else that wants to carry my product? And I thought, why are you asking me this? Mm-hmm. I appreciate having something that nobody else does, you know. Mm-hmm. So, what is yeah. that cracker? A living spoonful. It's uh, one of these sort of raw cracker products, and it's from mm-hmm. Oregon. Oregon. And um. Seasonally, I go. Um, we pick. We uh, bring in this uh, fresh pressed apple cider. From oh yes. Local grower, uh, Heiser Farm of New Hampshire Avenue. And, uh, they used to deliver to us, and um, they could not. Uh, several years ago, they could not do it any longer. So I took it upon myself to, because uh, if they didn't deliver, we wouldn't have gotten it out. So I go weekly and get it. You know, when the season is in. And uh, it's one of the best things around as far as oh, yeah. fresh fresh apples, cider. Apples and they grow and apples also. They grow yeah. apples there, and they have a farmer's It's Really nice. So Glut is a collective food cooperative, and we're going to take our next break, and then we'll come back. And if anybody out there has a question or concern, please call in at 1-800-450-7876. We'll be right back. You want to...
Welcome back, everybody. This is Vernon Oak for Everything Cooperative. We have Glut Food Cooperative, G-L-U-T. How did you all come up with that name in 1969, oh Glut? That is a most asked question. <laughs> and, um, well, we, we uh, figured uh, it was never, I mean, we was told that, you know, it's like uh, because, you know, to glut, to overeat. Yeah. Uh, it's like one of the seven sins. <laughs> yeah, people would say, oh, look at those gluttons and all that stuff they have. Can yeah, I say what Peter I, used to say, or is that just too a little too? Well, I, before you said, I like your shirt, uh, your forty-year shirt, uh, nineteen sixty-nine. Yeah, Gina, I'm wearing our, our orange shirt. Still orange cheap, still funky. Does it say forty? It's, I think it's close to fifty now. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. yeah it no, says still cheap, 40. still funky. Still and cheap, we are still funky. We're funky, all right. <laughs> Food for people, <laughs> not for profit. Right. Four zero zero five thirty fourth Street, Mount Rainia. Maryland, the telephone mm-hmm. number is 301-779-1978, established in 1969. Now, do you think you can say whatever Peter used to say? Oh, God bless Peter. Well, it, it's all part of our working to have an environment that people feel safe working in, too. Okay. Because, I mean, we've had, we've had a number of issues that we've had to deal with. We've had to deal with sexual harassment. Mm-hmm. And come up with a policy. We've many, many different things. Any big business, if they've had a problem, we've had those problems too. But dear Peter, when he came out, he was a, a gay gentleman that worked with us, and he said, "Oh, it stands for gays and lesbians united together." Oh, you gays and lesbians united. And All he right, used to nice. laugh about that because that was before it was so socially acceptable to admit that you were gay, but. But you, <laughs> oh, I never heard that one. Okay. You didn't hear it? Well, Peter and I used to work late into the night together. He he was our cheese ordering person for a long time. Well, that's what I wanted to get into next was how do you all, I got, um, you are responsible for the, what, the bulk? For me? Yeah. No, Chris orders all of our bulk grains and flowers and uh, beans, that sort of thing, our dry fruits and nuts. He manages all of that area. Judy manages Personal care, mm-hmm. which is a very broad range of products, including some tonics and supplements. And uh, Zaya orders supplements, and uh, I order a lot of what you call dry goods groceries. It's uh, uh, cereals and crackers and cookies and mixes and candy, oh, chocolate, definitely uh. the chocolate. I have an extensive chocolate section. And uh, Raquel orders produce. So everybody has different area of the store that they manage. Donatra orders cheese. Um, and then some people have, you know, some, we have what we call support workers. So we have a few people that are not yet hired on as workers. And they may not want to be. Um, and they work less hours. They make just a tiny bit less than what we do. And uh, uh, they get sort of the last pick of the hours that are shifts that are left over, but it's okay because it allows them a lot of liberty. They're not bound to order a section, order and stock a section. And um, so we have several people in that position that, that help us out too. So when you're ordering, do you have rules like you can only have $50,000 in this area or? No, that's been one of the difficult things because some of us have a lot more back stock than others, but we, Constantly remind ourselves, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. And, uh, you know, if you don't think you can sell it, don't order it. Or if you order it, promote it, you know. I mean, Judy, wouldn't you, don't you think that's how it goes? Yeah, although, yeah, it's, but it's come to where, you know, uh, if we don't order it, we won't have a business because people ask for things. People are in demand for things. And yeah. there, there are things we have to have now because we've been carrying it and if we don't have it, you know, it's like, where is it at? Where is it at? And, you know, so. Well, that's always the balancing act with inventory. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Explaining why you don't carry certain item anymore. And then things come and go. Uh, you know, products disappear. Okay. If you don't have a wholesaler, then what are you going to do? Well, I have things that I buy direct, and so does Judy. Uh, I have an excellent garlic hot sauce called Phil Phil's, Phil Phil Number 7 from Brooklyn. It's <laughs> It's really good. And so I direct order that. I direct order certain chocolates. Um, so a hot sauce called Phil Phil? F-I-L, F-I-L, number seven. It's hot. It's a garlic hot sauce. It's, it's hot. It's beautiful. Cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
And I just picked up a new, a new chocolate line, Hue, H-U, short for Hue, man. It's a paleo chocolate from New York. It's really, really good. Cocoa Parlor. That's another from thing. California. Yeah. Judy has the Zeresh line that's extremely popular. Body, yeah. body lotions and uh, cleaners and they're shea butter based. They're mm-hmm. incredibly popular. What were you going to say, Judy? I, well, I was going to say that we have a large uh, a, a line of products that uh, that you can't find other places, such as uh, Z Rush uh, Shea Butter line and Black Soap and Black Seed Oil and and um, uh, Nikki's Fi Fi Soft or Fifi Soft, but a lot of a lot of other things too. What's, what's Nikki Five Five? Oh, the Phil Phil sauce. The, the Phil Phil that's sauce. Just, that's just that's just one of oh. that's just one of many things because you one were looking for a specific many things. example. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. But getting back to the supplier aspect, a gentleman that used to work for us, Ed Muller, now has a business up near uh, Berkeley Springs, near Berkeley Springs, and um, it's Potomac Whole Foods. So he is a wholesaler, and he brings us a lot of our bulk flour, and. Um, our bulk uh, molasses and uh, maple syrup, and because we have a, a section of bulk liquids, mm-hmm. which is really Peanut very butter. very popular. Yeah, you bring your own jars. You bring your own container. Anything that we sell in bulk: rice, beans, flour, uh, and we have customers that are adamant recyclers. They they use those bags until they fall apart. And so you bring your own, if it's a, a bag, well, you don't weigh it. But if it's a jar or something with any significant weight at all, you get it weighed empty and we tear it, subtract that weight, and you can take your own containers home. Uh, we love it when people recycle and mm-hmm. um, try to be socially conscious that way, too. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. There are some customers that wish, it's, wish we would recycle more, but, you know, you can't very well have raisins in a bulk bin. It would be really, really messy, mm-hmm. you know. But for people like Ed, he's a smaller wholesaler, and mm-hmm. I think it helps to better regulate the marketplace when there are people like that around. We used to have another one called Shepherd's Health, and he uh, he retired finally. But those businesses are critical to our mm-hmm. business. So there's there's this uh, thing now. We, we talked about food deserts earlier, but from the farm to the table. Mm-hmm. And so how are you – do you – Go out and buy directly from farmers in season? A little bit. We use Tuscarora uh, Organic uh, Co-op out of Pennsylvania. They supply some of our produce. And then we have some other regular grocery providers. But uh, for the last two summers, we've had a couple from Southern Maryland and uh, Swan Farm. And they bring us tomatoes and some peppers, various things like that. And watermelons as big as your head. (laughs) Don't you think, Judy, as big as a boat? <laughs> well, they were big watermelons. <laughs> they were. But uh, they were supplying us twice a week all through the summer. And they're just a, mm-hmm. a couple a couple with a farm, Southern Maryland. So uh, we do try to do that. We had a gentleman bringing us persimmons. He's done that for a number of years now from Virginia. So we we don't do as much of that as I wish we did for, for farmers. But uh, people can come to us. In our deli case, right, Judy, we we have that as a consignment operation for sandwiches mm-hmm. and spreads and things. Mm-hmm. And so if you had a certified kitchen you made things in, you could come to us and say, could you carry my product? And we would mm-hmm. do a taste test at a meeting. And mm-hmm. then you would be allowed a certain amount of space, and you would bring the product in. If it didn't sell, you, you'd have to, as you'd say, eat it. Right. Well, for a small producer... That's not a bad idea. It gives you a chance to try your product out in public. You know, a young woman named Raquel brings us food. She did for a while and then stopped for a significant period of time. But now she's back. And she sells a lot of stuff. She's got good food, doesn't she, Judy? Yeah, well, she she came in demand. People wanted her her product, and it's pretty pretty good. It's a Mm -hmm. raw product. And um, people look for it, and... um, Helped her. We've helped her get, you know, a little more to grow. And uh, we try to we try to support our our, our local folks. Uh, uh, one of my products that I carry, like I mentioned, was the shea butter line, which is produced by a young black couple 
that was in the area, they, they since moved their business to, to North Carolina. But uh, they grew just by putting their product, and that's why I took it on. And uh, it's a really nice product. She, it's very hypoallergenic. Everybody buys it. Everybody loves it. And uh, and uh, people even tell me how it has helped their uh, cancer and uh, with uh, afterwards and so forth. But uh, we said like it, wait a minute. We, I, I didn't get that real clear, but I think when the, you said that this uh, shea uh, product is made by a black <laughs> couple. They used to be here. They moved to North Carolina yes. and is helped with cancer? Well, <laughs> a, a couple me- a lady mentioned to me the other day how she said that um, a friend of hers used it after her chemo and it helped remove the spot uh, oh, okay. on her skin. Okay. Yeah. And the okay. couple developed it, the woman who developed it, did it due to a product, a health product that she had. It's why she uh, put it on the market. Her dermatologist persuaded her to. And it's big now. Z Rush, if you check it out, it's online. It's really bad. And, um, okay, you have a, a product, and we have to take our final break, and we'll be right back with you guys. I'm going to tell you some of the things I want to do after. All right. This is the last segment already? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's been quick. It's been quick. Oh, my God. Was there something you want to talk about? <laughs> well, just we really up? quick is I'll be coming to your store. Thank you. I will. Oh. Would, Bring your friends. Pat, Pat and I will try to figure out how we can help you promote your store. Thank you. At, Great. At, you know, and, and I want to join the committee to taste test. <laughs> 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 that's, that's my job at home now, so I can I can extend that out. <laughs> be one of the taste testers. Well, you know, customers a lot of times will come saying, "Can you get item whatever? Can you get this?" And so then it's up to us to search and decide if we so have space. So blood foods. Co-op at 4005 34th Street, Mount Rainier, Maryland. It's excellent, right off of Rhode Island Avenue. Good. So it's street parking, but you need to come out and check them out, and we'll be talking more about it. Thank you guys so very much. We had fun. Thank uh, you thank very you, much. Judy and Nikki for thank you very much, Vernon. Vernon. We'll have you and, back and, on again. And, and bring oh, your please. dancing shoes like Vernon. You will be dancing because we always have good music. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. We'll see you next Thursday. Bye-bye. Live cooperatively. Fourteen fifty W O L.